It happens in a flash. Indeed, the origin of the word preeclampsia is Greek and means like a bolt from the blue. And it impacts your life like a lightning strike. It comes out of nowhere. How frightening that was in that moment. And suddenly I'm thinking, wow, you know, now this is life or death. I'm literally shaking. I'm scared to death because I'm at 32 weeks one day. My husband is pacing the room. Nobody's gonna come in here and tell me what preeclampsia is and what I should do. After that, I really don't remember anything else except for waking up in the ICU. What's happening to me? So my mind and my body were in two different places. And from that point, I blacked out. It strikes women around the world from all walks of life, and there is no way to prevent it. What disorder could be so cruel? Preeclampsia lurks until the pregnancy is well underway, and when it hits, it can be deadly to both mother and child. Eleni and Dimitri Sigas lost their firstborn, a baby girl named Nikonia. Turn towards the darkness and give in to the suffering and the bitterness and resentment and anger? Or do you choose to go in a different direction with it? What appeared to be a normal pregnancy at 29 weeks took a dangerous and ultimately deadly spin. Eight hours ago, I was pregnant and things started to go wrong, and now it's gone. It was a surreal chain of events Eleni describes as a tragedy of errors and ignorance. She was made to wait more than seven hours in a hospital room as her blood pressure skyrocketed and her body started shutting down. When she finally saw a doctor, news that the baby was in distress came as a total and complete shock. You need to be transferred to a hospital across town. That's the first time I heard that anything that, oh my gosh, my baby's gonna be delivered today. Something's wrong. Sometime during the brief but harrowing ambulance ride to the other hospital, the baby died. And all we heard was beep. And the doctor turns to us and says, I'm sorry, it's too late. Instead, she would have to deliver her stillborn daughter a memory forever seared in her soul and etched for eternity with notes from her journal. I wanted to hold my baby's still warm body. I wanted my love for her to flood her every pore and cell so I could breathe life back into her. And if that wouldn't work, then I wanted to die. I wanted to die and go live with her in heaven. Then, when it was over, did Eleni begin to get answers to those basic questions. What happened? What was this? Like most women, she had never heard of preeclampsia. In fact, startling survey results by the Preeclampsia Foundation show that more than half the pregnant women questioned were unsure or uninformed about the warning signs. Not knowing means the rate of infant death doubles. Dr. Thomas Easterling is co-founder of the Preeclampsia Foundation. Knowledge is power, uh, and we don't frighten women by educating them. Uh, I think they can handle it. Every year around the world, a staggering 76,000 women die of preeclampsia and half a million babies. That gives it the dreadfully dubious distinction of being a leading cause of premature birth and maternal death. That means patients working in partnership with their doctors by knowing what's normal for their own bodies, asking tough questions, and getting straight answers. These women, all preeclampsia survivors, would have welcomed that kind of response. They echo the foundation survey results with a simple show of hands. How many of you were not informed about the signs and symptoms of preeclampsia? Amazingly, all of their children survived, though some struggle with health and developmental issues. Ramifications are far-reaching for the entire family. You say the person most profoundly affected was your husband. He was really traumatized by it. 
um, because he was the only one there when I had my seizure and nobody told him anything that was going on. And then my daughter went to another hospital within hours and he's having to deal with me at one hospital and her at another hospital. And so he was alone and nobody told him basically what to look for. He saw what you didn't see. Exactly. What is your hope for the next generation? I never want my sons to go through what my husband went through. Do you feel like you're in a race for time, personally? I do. Um, my husband has not ruled out children if medical science changes. We'll take your blood pressure now. Still, it's important to know that preeclampsia need not be a death sentence. It's all about knowing the symptoms and trusting your instincts, being an empowered patient. Not feeling like you're putting the doctor or the healthcare system out by coming to care, uh, by coming in and being sent home. Uh, the only way we find this disease is with vigilance, both on the part of doctors and on the part of patients. Eleni Segas is one of the vigilant. Uh, despite the fact that she had a, such a short life here on Earth, doesn't change the fact that her spirit and what I can do with it can continue. Working through it together eventually brought healing, and then joy. Yes. Along came Jordan, and next, their youngest, Jonathan. I think that's such an important lesson for our kids. My, my kids know they have a big sister, so she's very much a part of our family's life. But beyond that, they also understand that I got very sick from preeclampsia. And with Jordan, he knows that you know he was a preemie. He suffered also because of this. And uh, <laughs> I guess preeclampsia is kind of another member of the family. <laughs> A family with a deep and abiding love of life. Get the bird, get the bird. Tiny moment, be with me forever. We float like a river, breathing, breathing. I may be grieving, but you.